Today we are solving problem four from chapter nine of economic principles, problems, and policies. So this question gives us the values for average fixed cost, average variable cost, average total cost, and marginal cost for a firm, along with the total product at each point. So what we want to find at the beginning of this question is that if the price in this market were $56, would the firm continue to produce? So we know that the zero profit point for a firm um, and the shutdown point for a firm between those two values is where a firm is going to produce. So the zero profit point is where the average total cost is equal to the marginal cost or is also the minimum of the average total cost. In this case, we can see that the minimum of the average total cost is $47.14. Because a price of $56 is above the zero profit point, we know that this firm is going to produce at that price. So the answer is yes. So where would be the profit maximizing output at a price of $56? So in order to find the profit maximizing output, we are going to first find the total cost and total revenue in order to find the maximum profit. So the total cost for this firm can be found by multiplying the average total cost by the total product. So we need to multiply average total cost by the total product. And this will give us the total cost at each unit. Now we need to find the total revenue. So we know that the total revenue at $56 is going to be equal to 56 times the total product. Finally, you want to find the profit at each unit. So the profit would be the total revenue minus the total cost. And as we can see, the profit maximizing output is going to be 8 units because the profit is maximized at $62.96 when we're producing eight units. We would also like to find the profit per unit of output. And in order to do this, we are going to divide the maximum profit by the output at that profit point. So we know that the profit per unit of output at eight units of output and a profit of $62.96 is going to be $7.87 per unit of output. Now we're going to repeat this analysis with a price of $41. So we know that the zero profit point is where the average total cost is at its minimum, which here we know is $47.14. Because $41 is below the zero profit point, we need to know if it's above the shutdown point in order to determine if the firm is going to produce. So the shutdown point is going to be where the average variable cost is equal to the marginal cost or the minimum of the average variable cost. And we can see that the average variable cost is at its minimum of $37. And so a price of $41, we are going to see the firm produce because that price is above the shutdown point. Like we did before, we want to know what the um, loss minimizing output would be at a price of $41. So we already have the total revenue, so we're going to find, or the total cost, so we're going to find the total revenue. At a price of $41, our total revenue is going to be 41 times the total product. And then we need to calculate our loss. And we know it's going to be a loss because they are producing below the zero profit point. So our loss is going to be our total revenue minus our total cost. And we can see that the loss minimizing output is going to be at a loss of negative $39, which happens to be at a total product of six units. We also want to find the loss per unit of output. So as we did before, we are going to divide the loss minimizing point by the number of units of output at that point, which is negative $6.50. We are going to repeat our analysis for a final time at a price of $32. So we know that a firm is going to shut down and stop producing at the shutdown point where the average variable cost is at its minimum or equal to the marginal cost. We know that our average variable cost is at a minimum at $37. Because the price is $32 and is less than the shutdown point, the firm is not going to produce at a price of $32. Part D of this question would like us to fill in the short run supply schedule at the prices given for a single firm and for 1,500 firms. So they are given us 
prices of 26 to 66 and it wants us to find what quantity would be the profit maximizing or loss minimizing quantity, what would be the profit or loss at that quantity, and what the quantity would be for 1,500 firms in the industry. Up here, I've copied over the total product and the total cost at that quantity that we calculated above. What we want to do is calculate the profit at each price at each total product. So first we're going to copy all of the prices from the cost schedule and transpose them over into this block table. Sorry. Now that we have all the prices at the top, what we're going to do is find the profit at each price at each quantity. So what we want to do is multiply the price times the quantity, and that gives us our total revenue, and subtract from that value the total cost. So there we have the profit at $26 in price and one unit. In order to move this formula to fill out the rest of the table, we need to make a few things constant. So we know that for the rest of this column, we're going to want to keep this price in the same place. So we're going to lock in where it is, but we know that we want it to move over columns, so we're not going to lock in the column value. We also want to keep the price constant, so we're going to lock in the price column, but not the, sorry, the product column, but not the product value because that needs to move as well. Finally, we're going to lock in the total cost column, but not the total cost value because that needs to move as well. So as we can see, when we drag this formula down, and click it here, we can see that we're multiplying the price times the total product that we desire as well as the total cost at that total product number. So make sure you check your work when you're dragging formulas around to make sure that they're all accessing the columns and rows that we want it to. Now we want to drag this formula to the side at all of our prices and check our work. Make sure that we're multiplying the price that we desire by the total product and the total cost at that product. And it looks like we've done it correctly. So now what we want to find is the profit maximizing or loss minimizing quantity for each price. We know that the shutdown price is $32. For, for a price of $26 and $32, we're not going to produce any output. And we're also not going to have any profit or loss. This holds true for all of the firms in the industry. Now that we're above our shutdown point, we're going to be minimizing our loss because we've not yet hit our zero profit point, which is 47.14. So at $38, we want to minimize our loss. So the minimum loss here appears to be negative $55, and this is at a total product of five. So at a total product of five, our profit is negative $55. At 41, we are also still minimizing loss. And we can see that our minimum loss is at negative $39 and a total product of six. At $46, we're still below the zero profit point, so we're still going to be minimizing loss. And as we can see, our minimum loss is at negative $7.98 and seven units of output. Since we've now moved above the zero profit point at $56, we want to be maximizing profit. So as we can see, our maximum profit here is $62.96 and eight units of output. Finally, at $66, we're also maximizing profit, and we can see that our maximum profit is at $144 and nine units of output. So now we wanna find the quantity for the 1,500 firms in the industry, and this is as easy as multiplying the total the quantity at our profit maximizing or loss minimizing price or level of output times the number of firms, which is 1,500. So, this value is equal to 1,500 times the single firm's quantity. The next part of this question, part E, wants us to explain why the segment of the marginal cost curve 
that lies above the average variable cost curve is equivalent to a firm's short run supply curve. And in order to explain this, we're going to look at it graphically. So here is a plot of a firm's marginal cost curve that looks like this. And we know that the average variable cost curve is going to cross the marginal cost curve at the minimum of the average variable cost, like that. So right here, as we discussed earlier, where the marginal cost curve crosses the average variable cost curve is the shutdown point, or where a firm is going to stop producing units. So because this is the shutdown point and the firm is not going to supply anywhere below this, we can see that any area above the average variable cost curve on the marginal cost curve is actually going to be the firm's supply curve. Finally, the last part of this question gives you a quantity demanded schedule at each of the same prices and wants you to find the equilibrium price and quantity for the industry and the individual firm. So we know that the supply curve for the industry is going to be the quantity supplied by the 1500 firms that we calculated earlier. So we're just going to copy this over. And here we have the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied in the industry. It's easy to find the equilibrium price because we can see that at a price of $46, the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. So the equilibrium price for the industry and for the individual firm is going to be $46. The quantity supplied is going to be 10,500 for the industry. And the quantity supplied for a single firm is going to be where we saw that quantity earlier. And you can see that at a price of $46, the quantity supplied by a single firm is seven. We also know that the loss incurred at a price of $46 for a single firm is negative $7.98. But we don't know what the loss for the entire industry is. So in order to do that, we are going to multiply the number of firms, 1,500, times the loss for an individual firm. And here we've calculated that the entire industry loss is going to be negative $11,970. Ultimately, is this industry going to contract or is it going to expand? Well, because the firms are all operating below the zero profit point, the industry is going to contract because they are not making a profit. They are only continuing to produce because it is more expensive to shut down than to continue to produce. And because they are not above the zero profit point, it's going to lead the entire industry to contract. 